Hare Krishna, dear devotees. My humble obeisances to you all, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you all for joining. Um, today we are starting, a, we are, I'm very happy to announce that today we are starting um, Sri Bhagavad Gita overview sessions. Um, today is the introduction and chapter one. Um, today's class will be given by Her Grace Prema Kishori Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prem Kishori Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Thank you so much for starting this series and thank you to Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All the to Shri Prabhupada. Um, please uh, take over, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hi Krishna. Hi Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hi Krishna everyone. Um, very excited to be here. My name is Prem Kishori. Uh, even though ideally Guru Maharaj should take this class, but he said, no, go ahead and, and start. So I'm very excited. Uh, let's dive into the journey. It'll be nice to have cameras on, but if you can't, it's fine too. Um, so we'll start. If I speak very fast, please let me know uh, that I'm speaking fast. And then we'll talk as we go. So if it'll be an interactive session, that will be really nice. I'll start with Manglacharan. Om Ajnan Timinandasya, Gyananjan Chalakaya, Chakshurun Militam Yena, Tasme Shri Gurve Namaha. Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Gadamahiyam Tadati Swapadantikam. Hey Krishna, Karina Sindhu, Deen Bandhu, Jagat Pate, Gopesha, Gopika Kantha, Radha Kantha, Namastute. Taptakanchan Gaurangi, Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari, Vrishpanus Te Devi, Pranamami Hari Priyai. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advet Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gaurvani Pracharine, Nevishesha Srinivadi Paschati Deshatarine. Hare Krishna. So, can I start, Srimati Mataji? Yes, please. Okay. So, overview of Bhagavad Gita in 18 days under the direction of um, His Holiness um, Chandamali Maharaj. The aim of the session is to give an overview of the chapter. This is all based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Sharvapad, who is the founder Acharya of ISKCON, or International Society for Krishna Consciousness. As an etiquette, I know almost everyone in this class or maybe everyone knows about Shri Prabhupada, but as an etiquette, I would like to start um, with the paying obeisances and remembering Shri Prabhupada in the beginning of this session. Shri Prabhupada, this is a little bit of his life. There's so much we can say. Prabhupada was born in a Vaishnava family. He talks highly about his father called Mohande who actually, he says, laid the foundation of Krishna consciousness in his life. This is Srila Prabhupada doing the famous Rathiyatra in Calcutta. Prabhupada met his uh, guru, his, uh, uh, Bhakti, uh, his holiness uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj in 1922. This is Srila Prabhupada at the rooftop where Prabhupada mentions that he didn't want to go, but his friend dragged him. And at the first meeting itself, Bhaktis Dhanta Prabhupada told him, you're a young boy, you speak English, preach the cult of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Western countries. And I'm so glad that he did that because then we are here now, years later. So over 100 years now, right? And Prabhupada took up Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada uh, was always preaching, always, even when he was married or when he took sannyas. Prabhupada was not only preaching, but Prabhupada was also writing, editing, printing, proofreading, binding, distributing his books. This Prabhupada with a printer in Delhi. I read that Prabhupada used to travel from Delhi to uh, from Vrindavan to Delhi. So to get his books printed and then proofread, then go back, then edit, then go back. And Prabhupada got heat stroke as well, but he would do it. Prabhupada didn't take Krishna consciousness uh, lightly. He was uh, trying to get to the heart of the country. So he was approaching the leaders with the preachings because he was so, so confident about the preaching of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada traveled across the sea. We know the famous Jaladuta, which is not even a passenger cruise. You know, it was like a trading, uh, trading shipment. 
and he was the only passenger and we know that Prabhupada suffered two heart attacks but he still came. Prabhupada gave us ISKCON which was started in New York in Tompkinson Square Park. Prabhupada did his first Hare Krishna um, outreach in the middle of a hippie concert in West Coast America. This is from the book uh, of Mukund Das Goswami. I can't recollect the name of the book, but I read it in that book. Prabhupada sent his disciples far and wide. This is Yamna Mataji, George Harrison, and everyone else um, to start the movement, percolate the ethereal layers of material existence. Prabhupada used to have a globe, you know, the atlas, the globe, the round ball. And he would point that where is he going to send his disciples next, which continent. So he was very like uh, far visionary. Pra this is Prabhupada in Moscow. Prabhupada was preaching wherever he was going, not only in India, but also uh, across the world to the leaders. He did not shy away. Prabhupada gave us over 70, 70 literatures he translated. And Prabhupada also started Back to Godhead magazine. So we cannot say that we are short of anything, you see, because Prabhupada has done everything. Not only that, this is Prabhupada's timeline of travel during his appearance on the earth. So we cannot even say that Prabhupada was just doing remote preaching. You see, you see this. Nama. Prishta Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami So 12 times around the globe, 25 countries visited and uh, International Society of Krishna Consciousness established. So with the, I would request each one of us to have a deep sense of gratitude for Shri Prabhupada before we start learning the overview of Bhagavad Gita. I asked Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, how will I speak in front of you? It will be very difficult. And you know what he said? If you think it is difficult, then just pray to Shri Prabhupada. It will become easy. Oh, so I, I like imbibed it. So let's pray to uh, this is Shri Radha Govinda in Bangalore is gone. Or whichever deities you are attached to, um, take their blessings and embark this journey. So Bhagavad Gita is an epic scripture and it has answers to all our problems. One book which has answers to all our problems. That's quite amazing. It, is, it was considered a spiritual dictionary by Mahatma Gandhi. It is a book of inspiration for many leaders across the planet. This is um, the testimony from Mahatma Gandhi and Albert Einstein. He said, those who meditate on Gita will derive fresh joy and new meanings from it every day. He said, Albert Einstein said, when I read the Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created this universe, everything else seems so superfluous. So we're very fortunate. The question can be raised, why this Bhagavad Gita? There's over like 600 translations. What makes Bhagavad Gita as it is so special? So analogy is that if your phone gets damaged, uh, if your phone gets damaged, you cannot charge it with a broken cable. Right? The cable has to be proper. Why? Because the lack of contact between the source and the receiver. So because we are in material world and somehow or other damaged, so we have to get that cable, which is the connection through the parampara. The message of Krishna must come via an unbroken chain of disciplic succession. So Prabhupada named his Bhagavad Gita as Bhagavad Gita as it is. It's very important. So Bhagavad Gita is a vast book. Systemic, systematic study of Gita will take about a year. And if Guru Mahaj gives permission after the 18 days, we'll do that if he gives permission. 
So in 18 days, we can't do that. So we're going to focus on the flow of thoughts between Krishna and Arjun. And the objective is to embark a spark so that we are prepared to do a deeper study of Bhagavad Gita. And it's, of course, it's application in our life, which is actually a lifelong journey, but we can start. Bhagavad Gita has 700 verses. Majority is spoken by Krishna. He speaks 574 verses. Arjun speaks 84 verses. Sanjay speaks 41 and Thitrashtra speaks just one verse. These are the four speakers. There are five key things which are discussed in Bhagavad Gita in these 700 verses. It just consolidates to five key things. What are they? Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, Kala, and Karma. Out of Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, Kala, and Karma, Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, and Kala are eternal. Means they are not dependent on the time factor. Means there is no past, present, or future. Whereas karma is temporary, it's manifested and annihilated under the duration of past, present, and future domain of the time factor. So again, five things which are discussed, Ishvara, Prakriti, which is material nature, Jiva, which is soul, Kala, which is the time factor itself, and Karma, which is the activities in the material modes of nature of a conditioned soul. What is the mood of Bhagavad Gita in which it is spoken? So you see, Bhagavad Gita is a dialogue. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue between Krishna and Arjun. And of course, there are some, some amount of dialogue going on between um, Hitrashta and Sanjay as well. The mood is Bhagavad, Arjun's bewilderment and appearance of illusion must be understood to be Krishna's arrangement. Because how we study in Chaitanya Chaitamrita that... Um, Krishna Surya Sama Maya Hair and the car, Jaha Krishna Tahu Nahi Maya Radhikar. So Krishna is like a sun. If there is sun, there is no point for darkness. So how is it possible that Arjun is in illusion in front of Krishna right there in front of him? So it must be understood that this is Krishna's arrangement because he wants to speak Bhagavad Gita. So if not for Arjun's confusion and bewilderment, there would have been no necessity for Krishna to speak Bhagavad Gita to rescue him. Although Arjun is the apparent first listener of Bhagavad Gita, it is for the benefit of everyone. Each one of us can derive. Bhagavad Gita as it is. Now, the question could be, I'm trying to encourage each one of us, including myself, that I must read, I must execute. But the question could be, read or not to read? So, you see, Bhagavad Gita, there are two levels of conversations going on. In an outer level, the conversation it looks like they talk about people and events which is between Thitrashtra and Sanjay right Thitrashtra is asking Sanjay what's happening on the battlefield of Kurukshetra so they talk about people and they talk about events but the inner level is the talk about wisdom the talks about wisdom which is between Arjun and Krishna so also if we're not going to read Bhagavad Gita then then what is then what are we going to do there's a difference there's a difference between material education and spiritual education what is the difference the difference is in a material education you know we start slow is the schooling in college so and then at one point of life it becomes fast progress okay you progressing uh, fastly very quickly in your life to achieve your goals and you have family and money and house and everything but after some point everybody wants to retire so it hits a plateau right so there's progress and as the time progresses it becomes like okay you know what what else now i know so many people who are at a very high position in their career and then they say that now we think that what what is what is there to do now you know what's there now so they have hit the plateau that's material spiritual on the other hand spiritual knowledge is like a spiral like you we start and then it goes on expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding so there is no plateau in that sense so bhagavad gita is going to give us the spiritual knowledge which will help us uh, to see the difference between matter and spirit now people if you ask around in the whole world are looking for what mostly a house by the sea a color tv and an mp3 right 
this is like a success if I can have all these things. The definition of success is this. And what's happening, the social media has made it more like apparent that this is the definition of success. What's your net worth? What did you start from? What's your family background? It was so menial, but now you made it to top. So social media, people portray or we portray happy faces. But what's the reality? What's the ground reality? Why do we need Bhagavad Gita spiritual knowledge? Because they have happy faces, but they have broken hearts or we have broken hearts and we have happy faces outside. So are we going to live such a superficial life always? Or are we ever going to really like wake up and say that I don't like this. There's got to be something else. So that's one more inspiration to go ahead in this journey of Bhagavad Gita. So Arjun's indecisiveness is the leading factor which makes Krishna speak, start speaking. So Krishna drove the chariot in midst of both armies. You see, these are the two armies, sea of people. Arjun one is, was in difficulty in having to fight the battle of Kurukshetra. He surrendered to Krishna and consequently this Bhagavad Gita was spoken. Imagine this is not like a, a house where I'm sitting alone. Or this is not like a circle of friends where we are going to reveal our hearts this is a battlefield where so many people were there arms ammunition arm, and uh, animals all ready to go ahead and fight and that's where Bhagavad Gita was spoken so every journey begins with a single step so let's begin the journey into the mysticism Gita so welcome again everyone I'm going to start play. I'm going to start with Gita Mahatmya, which is given by Prabhupada in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita. So I'll pray, play it, and then we'll understand the meaning of meaning of it. Hopefully, at the end of the session of 18th chapter. <laughs> Vishnu Padam Mavapnoti Bhaya Shoka Divarjita Gita Dhyayana Shilasya Pranayama Parasyacha Naiva Santi Hipapani Purva Janma Kritani Cha Mala Nirmo Janam Pumsa Jalas Nanam Dini Sakrit Gita Mbasi Snanam Samsara Malanashanam Gita Sugita Kartavya Kim Manye Shastra Vistari Yaswayam Padmanabhasya Mukha Padmadini Sruta Bharatam Rita Sarvasvam Vishnu Vatra Dvini Sritam Gita Gangoda Kampitva Punar Janmana Vidyati Sarvo Panishado Gavo Dogda Gopala Nandana Partho Vatsa Sudir Bhokta Dugdham Gita Amritam Mahat Ekam Shastram Devaki Putra Gitam Yeko Devo Devaki Putra Eva Yeko Mantras Tasya Namani Ani Karma Pekam Tasya Devasya Seva So I'll quickly read the translation and um, so we understand what Bhagavad Gita is. This is written by Shankaracharya. One who with a regulated mind recites with devotion this Bhagavad Gita scripture, which is the bestower of all virtue, will attain to a holy abode, which such as Vaikuntha, the resident of the residence of Lord Vishnu, which is always free from the mundane qualities based on fear and lamentation. If one reads Bhagavad Gita very sincerely and with all seriousness, then by the grace of the Lord, the reactions of his past misdeeds will not act upon him. 
one may cleanse himself daily by taking a bath in water but if one takes a bath even once in the sacred ganges water of bhagavad gita for him the dirt of material life is altogether vanquished because bhagavad gita is spoken by the supreme personality of godhead one need not read any other scripture any other vedic literature one need only attentively and regularly hear and read bhagavad gita in the present age people are so absorbed in mundane activities that it is not possible for them to read all the vedic literatures but this is not necessary this one book bhagavad gita will suffice because it is the essence of all vedic literatures and especially because it is spoken by the supreme personality of godhead by drinking the ganges waters of the gita the divine quintessence of mahabharat emanating from the lo holy lotus mouth of lord vishnu one will never take rebirth in the material world again in other words by devotionally reciting the gita the cycle of birth and death is terminated all the upanishads are like a cow and the milker of the cow is lord shri krishna the son of nanda arjun is the calf the beautiful nectar of gita is the milk and the fortunate devotees of fine theistic intellect are the drinkers and enjoyers of that milk there need be only one holy scripture the divine gita sung by lord shri krishna only one worshipable lord lord shri krishna only one mantra his holy names and only one duty devotional service unto that supreme worshipable lord shri krishna so let's go ahead sorry so arjun vishad yoga chapter 1 or arjun's yoga of lamentation or prabhupa translates it as translates it as observing the army on the battlefield in this particular chapter there are three personalities which are introduced can you tell me who, i will start from the top uh, top left can you tell me who is this where i'm pointing who is this you can unmute oh dhritarashtra dhritarashtra very nice thank you who is this in the middle arjuna arjuna who is this karna this is duryodhan chapter 1 so so very nice thank you very much so this is the first verse uh not all the verses are there but the key verses and and the sequential is there arjuna first verse is spoken by dhritarashtra of bhagavad gita he says dhritarashtra uvacha dharam kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyutsavaha vamaka pandavas chaiva kimakurvat sanjaya so he's saying in the uh, battlefield of the uh, on the holy field of uh, of kurukshetra samaveta yuyutsava desiring to fight mamaka pandavas chaiva my sons and the sons of pandu what did they do kim akurvat sanjaya what did they do you see this is dhritarashtra face is the index of the mind so if you look at his face so what do you think is going on in his mind what are the two feelings that shravapad explains in his purport to this verse what are the two feelings that the trust is feeling in this particular verse when he speaks all right if anyone would like to say please go ahead and say uh or write to me in the chat or for the sake of time i'll go ahead so prabhupad writes fearful and doubtful he says too in the purport he was fearful because by the influence of the dharam kshetra his sons may change their mind and doubtful because krishna was present so they may either lose the battle the kurus or they may not be a battle to fearful and doubtful let's analyze this verse very important first verse so dharam kshetra i think shridhi mata ji will know this in south india the if any auspicious thing has to be done uh let's say somebody buys a house so the ritual is that they have to over boil the milk on the stove so dharam kshetra embodies that this is a auspicious land so it's auspicious and then the key other key word is mam kaha pandava so my sons and the sons of pandu this is like you see this is a royal family and he is not supposed to the rajah was not supposed to 
distinguish between his sons and the sons of his younger brother Pandu. But he's separating. Like if you have made ever paneer or cottage cheese from the milk, how the milk gets separated from the cottage cheese, like that he's separating. And then Kim, and then the last thing he's asking is Kim Akurvat. That's a very unique question. You know, if I give you a bowl full of sandesh or rasgulla, and then I ask now, what are you going to do with it? You know, here you go, I'm giving you this platter. What are you going to do with it? Of course, you're going to eat it. That's so obvious. So this is the battlefield. Everyone is has made huge arrangements to be there. But he's asking, what, are, what did they do? So that is like fearful and doubtful. So when you read Prabhupada's puppet, remember the two feelings, fearful and doubtful. That's the introduction for Dhritarashtra. Then comes the second personality, which I think you must tell me who is this. Then I will read the verse. Who is this? This Duryodhana. person. Duryodhana. Thank you. Thank you, Ataji. I think Shri Mataji is a pro. Uh, so he says this verse Pashetam Pandu Putra Nam Acharya Mahitam Chamum Vyodham Drupada Putre Na Tava Shishena Dhimata. Oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupad. So when Duryodhan saw the military phalanx arrangement by the Pandus, this was his reaction. So let me go more deep. It looks like his eyes are going to fall out of the socket, you know. He was like so shocked. Because he wasn't expecting Panduas to be so expertly, the military filings to be so expertly arranged because they were in exile. And this is Dronacharya. So in the beginning of the battle, Arjun, when started, before starting the battle, actually shoots an arrow towards the feet of Dronacharya to pay his obeisances. But Duryodhan, being a politician, yeah. comes and uh, actually... Uh, what does he do? He actually comes and points out the fault. So he's actually being a little sarcastic to his guru, Dronacharya. What is he saying? Oh, my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple, the son of Drupad. There's a story, right? I think most of you know the story. Dhrishtadumnya was the son of Drupad. So Drupada and Dronacharya were friends. They went to same Gurukul. And Dronacharya was not from a very rich family. He was Brahman. You know? Brahmins are not very rich. But uh, Dushtadumnya was a prince. So Dushtadumnya once promised Dronacharya that when I become a king, I will give you this, 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 this villages. Now you're promising a Brahmana. You see, you can't like break. So when Dushtadumnya became the king and Dronacharya went to ask, it's not that Dronacharya was greedy, but you have to keep the promise. The Kshatriya keeps the promise. And, and Dronacharya, uh, Dushtadumnya refused. That time, the enmity this, uh, arose between the two, Drupada and Dronacharya. So much so that Drupada actually did a yagya to get a son who was Dushtadumnya who would kill Dronacharya. And Dronacharya knew that, that Dushtadumnya will kill him. Even though when Dushadumnya was given to Dronacharya at the time of education for military phalanx or, mil or arts and uh, arms and ammunition training, Dronacharya was very magnanimous in his heart and he trained Dushadumnya. Looks like Dronacharya, Dur Duryodhana knew about it as well. So he's sarcastic. And then what happens? Then uh, everybody starts blowing their conch shells. So there are some of the signs which are already showing that. Uh, Pandavas are going to win the war. So um, just pay attention and you might be able to pick before I actually show you the final list. That what are the signs which show that Pandavas are going to win regardless from the beginning, from chapter one. Sagho Shodhartarashtra Nam Hidyani Vridarayed Nabhas Chapritrivim Chaiva Tumulo Abhyanu Abhyanu Nadayan the blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious and thus vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. So this is one sign. 
Hidriyani Vridharayet. So when Krishna and Pandavas were blowing their conch shells, it shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. The blowing conch shell shattered because it instilled the fear that you're going to lose. And then these are the names of uh, different conch shells which are mentioned uh, in chapter 1. Krishna's conch shell is Panchajanya, Arjun's conch shell is Devadatta, Yudhishthir is Anant Vijaya, Bhima is Pandra, Nakul's conch shell is Sughosh, and Sadev conch shell is Mani Pushpaka. So they are all transcendental conch shells. And this is from verse number 1 to verse number, I'm sorry, verse number 16 to 18. Now, chapter 1 is interesting because you can analyze different, different things. What are the signs of victory? And also Krishna is addressed with 12 different names in one chapter. This is the only chapter in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna is addressed by so many names. And this is the list of Krishna's names which is by which he is addressed. Arjun is addressed as Dhananjaya, Partha and Gudakesh and Bhim is addressed as Rakodara, which is voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks. Very nice meditation. So, okay, so I'll break the secret. This is the list of the signs which actually prove from the get-go that Pandavas are going to win the war. One is verse number 14, where it says, Krishna's personal presence confirms victory. Chayastu Pandu Putra Nam Yesham. Uh, wherever there is Hishikesh or, or Krishna, there is always going to be victory. Then, Goddess of Fortune, wherever Krishna is there, Goddess of Fortune is there. So she's going to bring all fortune. Then Kurukshetra itself is a holy place. Then Hanumanji is sitting on the flag of Arjun's chariot. So as Hanumanji gave service to the Lord of his heart, Lord Ram, like that he's going to inspire Arjun to give service to the Lord of his heart, which is Krishna. Then conch shell uh, or Krishna's wish or, or different conch shells with transcendental conch that we just discussed. And symbol of Vishnu, Bhishma's conch shell to pacify Duryodhan. This is a very interesting verse, and this has to be read in very like different the different different commentaries. I I like this verse, verse number twelve, where Bhishma uh, is blowing a conch shell to pacify Duryodhan. But Prabhupada explained in the purport that there is a dual meaning. Okay, he's pacifying Duryodhan that I'm going to be on your side, but he's also blowing in a way to say that actually, because Krishna is there, we have no chance. But I'm still with you. So be, be assured of my association or my participation on your side. Then Arjun's chariot was given by Agni Dev, which was able to go all over the directions in all over the world. And then, of course, Hridhyani Vradhariyat, which we just studied. So these are the nine signs in chapter one, which indicate that Krishna Pandavas are going to win the war. Uh, then this is a turning point. So far what we have read, so far we have read that Dhritarashtra is the first speaker. The main key was, words in the first verse are um, uh, Mama, uh, Krishna, Dharam Shetre, then Mamaka Pandava, and then Kimakurvat. And then we studied that Duryodhan is the second speaker or a personality introduced. And what is he doing? He's shocked. He, he names, he names whatever, whatever is his strength from his side. But basically the first reaction, he's shocked at the military phalanx arrangement, which was so expert, expertly done on the sides of the Pandavas. And he comes and complains to Dronacharya. And then we studied that uh, how all the, there are different signs which indicate that the war is going to be, the victory is going to be on the side of the Pandavas. And then this is the third personality which is introduced in first chapter, which is Arjun. And this is kind of a key verse uh, from verse 21 to 22. Arjun uvacha se nayor madhye ratham sthapaya me achyuta ya vareta nirikshe aham yudho kamana vasthina avasthitan kair maya saha yodhavyam asmin rana samudhya me. So Arjun is requesting infallible Lord. So he's addressing Krishna as Achyuta, which is infallible Lord to draw his chariot in the middle of the battlefield. This is how Arjun starts speaking. And then he's observing, this is verse 23. He's, he keeps on saying, Yotsyamanam avekshayaham ya ete atrasamagataha dhatrashtrasyadurubuddhe yudhe priyachikirshavaha. 
Arjun wants to see who have come to fight, wishing to please the evil-minded or uh, Duryodhan or or, or Dhritarashtras. Dhritarashtra yasya durbudher means that the whole thing was because the buddhi, the intelligence of Dhritarashtra was durbudhi, low intelligence. So he wanted to say that who has assembled there, uh, who has come to fight. Now, question may be raised that is Arjun scared? You know, why is he, why is he wanting to analyze the other party? Is he scared? Or does he, is he going to like run away in this particular verse? We haven't gone further. Shababad explained in the purport that he's not scared, definitely. And definitely so far, he's not thinking of quitting as well. Uh, but uh, he wants to analyze that how his own family members have become so antagonistic. So you can read Prabhupada's purport and, and relish what he's saying there. Then Sanjay is telling Dhritarashtra, Sanjay vacha evam yukto rishi kesho guda keshe na bharata se na yor bhayor madhye sthapa sthapa vit sapa vitva rathotamam Krishna draws the chariot in the midst of both the armies. So he's ordered by Arjun and he expresses his desire why he wants the, the chariot to be in the middle of the two armies. And then he brings it, which is confirmed by Sanjay. Arjun gives five total reasons to Krishna why he's not going to fight the war. Five total. Out of the five total reasons that he gives to Krishna, four are in, in chapter one. Okay, and one is in chapter two. So this is one of the first reasons in this verse that why he's not going to fight the war. So far till verse 23, it's not that he's not going to fight. He just wants to inspect. And also he wants to see the strength of the other party. So this is what he says. Tan samikshya sakonte ya sarvan bandhuna vastitan kripaya paraya vishto vishidhan idam abravit. When the, pers when the son of Kunti, Arjun, saw all these different grades of friends and relatives, he became overwhelmed with compassion and spoke thus. So the first reason that he will give to Krishna that he's not going to fight is compassion. That my family is an object of my compassion, not my wrath. You have to fight, you have to show your anger. So wrath. No, they're not. They're, they're the object of my compassion. And then from verse 28 to 30, there are different signs which are described. When he starts feeling this compassion and becomes overwhelmed, these are the different kinds of signs which are described in, in Arjun's body. You know, his limbs are quivering, his mouth is drying up, his whole body is trembling, hair on the body is standing on the end, the Gandiva bow, famous bow is slipping out of his hands. His skin is burning. The legs are not, you know, he's shaking. He can't even bear his own weight. And he's forgetting himself, forgetting myself and mind reeling due to the weakness of the heart, Prabhupada explains. And he only sees the cause of misfortune. So in verse number 27 to 30, the reason he gives is compassion. I'm not going to fight Krishna. Then from this particular verse, he gives a second reason why he's not going to fight the war. Arjun's further symptoms and sees only the causes of misfortune. It says, Krishna, these people have lost their intelligence, but Viparitani Keshava. Oh, Krishna, Nimittani Chapashyami Viparitani Keshava. So Vipreet in Hindi means opposite. So the, we are only seeing the opposite. There's no good which is going to come out. So see, this is a dialogue. It's not like Krishna is going to force his decision on Arjun, but Krishna, Arjun is completely free to express how he's feeling um, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Krishna is also hearing. And then he continues to say, Na cha shreyo anupashya mi hatva swa janam ahave na kankshe vijayam krishna na cha rajyam sukhani cha. Arjun cannot enjoy kingdom at the cost of killing the relatives. So this is the second reason, no enjoyment. 
okay this prabhupad writes that in, in material world everybody wants to have friends and relatives why because they want to show off their riches it's, a, it's not that we can enjoy in isolation there's got to be a second person to be able to enjoy so he's saying everybody is going to be dead so even if i win this kingdom forget about this kingdom the kingdom which is unrivaled even with the demigods how am i going to enjoy no enjoyment and arjun is actually not ready to fight even in exchange of the three worlds forget about you know this uh, dynasty of the kurus and then this is the third reason there were so many verses so i didn't put them but uh, the, this is the zest so so far verse 27 no compassion my family is object of my compassion then from verse 31 onwards no enjoyment krishna if my family is going to be dead and gone who am i going to enjoy with and then from verse 36 43 44 and also in chapter 2 verse 5 i will give you these slides if if you all want but just hear it out that he's actually fearing the sinful reactions so he's introspecting if i'm going to fight there's going to be a sinful reaction for it and Prabhupada very nicely explains this. We'll go in the hierarchy. Krishna, Arjun says, Krishna, if I'm going to fight, then the superiors of the family are going to be killed. So when the superiors of the family are going to be killed, who is going to give us the culture? You know, who's going to teach us what, what kind of a ritual to be performed, how to raise a family? So with the superiors being killed, there's going to be a destruction of the family tradition. And when the family tradition is spoiled, then we will, the people will go towards irreligion. Irreligion will predominate in the family. And when the irreligion becomes predominating in the family, then the woman becomes polluted. Chastity and faithfulness of a woman, Prabhupada mentions in, in verse 40, are very needed. It's essential to give birth to a good progeny, chastity and faithfulness. When the woman becomes unchaste, then what happens? Un unwanted progeny or Varna Shankara will come about. And with the Varna Shankara coming about, all kinds of community projects and family welfare activities are devastated. So it results in the chaos in the society. So verse 39 to verse 42, he gives a reason, fear of sinful reaction. And this is, he's actually explaining what he's saying. Amazing, right? And then, he says, this is indecision. Nor do we know which is better, which we'll do tomorrow, which is better, conquering them, conquering them or being conquered by them. So he's indecided, you know, can't make up the mind. So basically, this is the summary. <coughs> Compassion, Arjun's reason for not wishing to fight. <coughs> Just focus on the red, sorry. No enjoyment. Destruction of the family uh, tradition then fear of sinful reaction, and then indecision. Out of the five reasons he gives, four are in chapter one. So again, compassion, no enjoyment, fear of sinful reactions, destruction of the family dynasty, and indecision. And then he's, he's like, this is Arjun. He started with a helmet on his head, Gandiva bow in his hand. The arrows were straight everything so you see he's like crying the tears are rolling down kandiva bo has slipped look at his arrows sorry look oh krishna look at his arrows they're all like falling off where are you so which one can you relate to which one can you relate to compassion can you relate to which reason no enjoyment Fear of sinful reactions, family traditions are destroyed or indecision. Whenever, whenever I read this chapter, no matter you know what's going to actually unfold later, I become fully convinced that Arjun should not fight until Krishna starts speaking. So this is like, uh, this is the summary of the whole chapter. So the trust inquires from uh, verse number one uh, that Kimakurvat is the key word that uh, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do and then the fear of Duryodhan is expressed from verse 2 to verse 11 in this chapter <coughs> sorry then blowing of conscious from verse 12 to verse 19 
And then Arjun starts speaking, Arjun's observation from verse 20 to 27. And then Arjun gives reason to Krishna, he's not going to fight in the last part of the chapter, which is verse 28 to verse 46. Uh, and so there are 46 verses in this particular chapter. I do want to show a video. So uh, Srimati, can we go, or can we not go live because then you might have copyright things and then we'll do one poll. Let me know when I can show the video, Srimati. So shall I stop the live stream? Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure, I stopped. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Uh, I love this video and I always show at the end of the first session. Let's see what Prabhupada talks about Krishna consciousness. So this is Prabhupada's interview at BBC studio in San Francisco after the first ever out of Jagannath Puri Rath Yatra in America. Nice, no? Shababar is so nice. Um, and I find it witty. Okay, so I'm going to quiz you all now. Let's see. So I'm going to put two questions on your screen. I'm going to see if you heard it or you slept through it. So please answer these two questions. What does Kapi Dhwaja mean? It signifies, this is out of the course question. I didn't discuss this, but let's see. The presence of Hanuman on, on Arjun's chariot. Can you see the quiz? Could you please tell me? Can you see yes, it? Yes, Prem Kishore. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The shape of the flag was like a cat, a kite. The Sankhya Yoga philosophy explained by Kapil Muni, the, pat, the pataka, which indicates good fortune. Question number two, what made Dhritarashtra fearful and doubtful about the war of Mahabharat? Virtuousness of Pandavas, Krishna's presence on their side, vast military strength of Pandavas, presence of strong and brave animals like horses and elephants, expert military arrangement of Dhrishta Dumnya. Uh -huh. What does Kapi Dhwaja mean and what's making the last of fearful and doubtful? So one minute has passed ever since I showed this. I will give another one minute. minute. No. So far only 12 people have voted. I cannot see the question. Yeah, if you are on phone, um, you can swipe it aside and you can see, I think, Amad. Okay, 18, 18 devotees have voted. Thank you. The poll is still on. Brash Vlasni Mataji, you have a question? Uh, no, 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 Mataji, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. It's fine. Hare Krishna, um, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt, but it, uh, when I click on the poll, it says uh, quiz in progress, but it is, it, is, it is not showing me. So you can write your answer in the chat, and then we can look at that. Thank you. All right, so two minutes, 13 seconds, 14 seconds, 15 seconds. How long am I going to do? 19, at least one more. 20, okay, thank you. 20 out of 32 devotees. I think she, me and Srimati cannot vote. Yeah. So um, I think their second question is not getting that much answers. I think they are not. If you scroll down, you can see the second question too. Yeah, we're not able to see the second question. Oh, Antiji, oh. if you scroll down or scroll on the site, whatever device yeah. you have. Still not able to see it. Uh, it should be in a chat. No, there is nothing on no, chat. Not in the there's chat. A, there's a poll. Uh, Krishna I think, you know, after answering the first question, when people submit, I think second question will not show. So that's why a lot of people... Yeah, you know, don't click on submit. Um, before clicking on submit itself, you have to answer the second one. And then oh, click. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Now we already submit the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm mm -hmm. going to end the poll and show the result. Yes. Is that okay? Thank yeah, you. yeah. Okay, this is the result. What does Kapi Dhwaja mean? It signifies, so 87 personal devotees said presence of Hanuman and Arjun's chariot, which is the right answer, which is the right answer. 
uh, somebody said shape of a flag was like a kite. So that was uh, my brain child. I wrote it because of, <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> but the pataka, which indicates good fortune. Uh, no, that's not Kapi uh, All right. So the next question. So first question, 95% people on 23 out of 24. You can see that, right? And second question, 17 out of 24 devotees answered. There were more than 24 though. So what made Dhritarashtra fearful and doubtful about the war of Mahabharat? The virtuousness of Pandavas, Krishna's presence on this side. 88% of the devotees gave right answer. Thank you. Vast military strength of Pandavas, uh, not for Dhritarashtra, maybe for Duryodhan, this could be right. So that's, that's we have. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we stop here. If there's any question, reflection, realizations, correction, take that. Or if you want to put your question in the chat. I think Guru Maharaj is on still, right? Yes. If uh, Guru Maharaj wants to add anything. Um, I think yes. Uh -huh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Except my humble obeisance is what can we do? Yeah, interesting, um, interestingly presented. Can't understand. I, I just commented, I mean, I said that it was very interesting how it was presented. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for the encouragement. Uh, Namrata raised her hand. Um, Na Namrata Antaji. Please go ahead. Um, thank you for this wonderful class on chapter one of Bhagavad Gita. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, thank you. So my question, my question is, uh, I think in, in 1.32 around, uh, there's a term named aggressors. So um, who, whom can we call aggressors in today's world? Yeah, yeah, that's verse number 31. That's uh, so she's asking the, who is an aggressor in verse 31. There is, I'll open the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, there are six kinds of aggressors which are mentioned there, right? And the, uh, at the beginning of the purport, the Prabhupada mentions there are six kinds of aggressors. Gurmaj, would you like to take this question? She's asking who is called as an aggressor in verse 31 purport. Yeah. Uh, in world. There's six persons are there and that's mentioned in the purport at, right at the very beginning. Yeah. 31. Which verse is it? I'm, I'm forgetting. It's verse 36, isn't it? <laughs> yes, Gurmash. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's there. These are listed. A poison giver, one who sets fire to the house, one who attacks with deadly weapons, one who plunders riches, one who occupies another's land, one who kid kidnaps a wife. Such aggressors are at once to be killed, and no sin is incurred by killing such aggressors. So, but that doesn't apply to uh, today's modern law society. This is the Vedic injunctions, which are the actual injunctions that, that govern uh, human culture. Mm -hmm. You cannot use these reasons in a defensive way once you're implicated in killing the aggressor. They will not accept that. <laughs> So yeah, it applies in, in in terms of the ideal principles, which are coming from the Vedas. And I think you know, I think when he's talking about Vedic injunction, this is this is the uh, law. Of, this is the Manu Samhita, as being right. as being extracted from Manu Samhita, which is the law books for governing the activities of the human culture. Mm -hmm. But if you would apply them today, they wouldn't they wouldn't be accepted. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in today's world, uh, there is a lot of activities going on which um, 
you know, the person, uh, they are doing so many sinful activities which can be related as an aggressor. So how do we recognize them? And sometimes we, we uh, aren't able to differentiate when to tolerate those people or when to uh, take another way for those people and when to you know, take a, a hard action for those kind of aggressors. So uh, if we recognize them, then we can understand it. It depends on what position you're in. If you're in, a, if you're in uh, the position of governing the society, then there is, there is uh, rightful action that has to be taken. But if you're just just one of the members of society, then you have to see what is your role, whether you should get involved or not. <laughs> but there are persons who are required to take to to manage society when such aggressors uh, arise. They have to, uh, uh, in order to protect the rest of the population, they have to act <laughs> to stop such aggressors. <laughs> But nowadays, uh, the laws are, are, are not even clear. And that's why there are so many court cases when there's something happens because nobody can understand actually how to, how to deal with these situations because there's no clear understanding. The, the man-made laws are all ambiguous mm -hmm. Or they're made with certain uh, motivations, which are not in line with the the uh, principle of protection. <laughs> so, as an as an ordinary person within society, or just one of the members of society, we hear about it all the time. Sometimes we even get a chance to experience it by witnessing it. But generally, we don't get involved. Prabhupada uses the example how when he first came to America, he noticed that, and it was told to him, that when someone was attacked on the street by an aggressor, no one would do anything to help the person who was attacked. And Prabhupada was shocked in that there is no civility amongst people that if some innocent person is being attacked, no one is, comes to, to his rescue to help. And so we were living in a society that doesn't follow any authority in any caring. They create their own authorities based on on what is on personal vested interest for instance why wouldn't a person try to protect another person when someone is harming that person that person will think well if i get involved then i might also be implicated and therefore i'll have to wind up in court and i'll have to testify and I'll have, like that And so they don't want to get involved because the legal system is that they also will be seen as uh, perpetrators or aggressors or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's one reason. And the other one is just human sentiments have been somewhat dulled by today's lifestyle. <laughs> But here it's clear. I'm. I have a personal uh, experience, indirectly but somewhat direct, about how this works. Um, I'll talk to. I'll. I'll tell that offline, not online. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Prem Kishore Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. I've got a question or I've got a comment. Uh, when the different names you mentioned, it's interesting how many names of Krishna are mentioned in that first chapter. Mm -hmm. One is Madhava, mm -hmm. which indicates the goddess, uh, husband of the goddess of fortune. 
but that was spoken by our team, not in a praiseworthy way, but in a, but in, but in the opposite. He was saying, "You are Madhava, the husband of the goddess of fortune, but you're you're acting you're acting you're act, actually asking me to cause misfortune." So it was a reverse. Although he's saying it, he means something different. He's not he's not uh, praising the Lord as as the husband of the goddess of fortune. He's using it in a facetious way to say. This is your actual uh, title, but you're acting as a, to cause misfortune. So you're criticizing Krishna by saying that. Is it because they are still friends and he hasn't surrendered? Uh, yeah, he's he's using every argument he can to somehow or other get out of the, you know, the the idea of that he has to fight. <laughs> Yeah. But when he become when he when he come when we come to the seventh verse in the next chapter, then he realizes he gets nowhere simply by playing the friendship role. So now he says, "Now I'm a soul surrendered to you. Now you please instruct me." So he takes the role of a disciple. And then everything becomes the transmission of the knowledge becomes clear or, fit, or continuous. Thank you for pointing that out, Gurmaj. Yeah, it's interesting, yeah. Any other question, reflection, realizations, corrections? I don't have... <clears throat> Gurmaj, do you give permission to wrap up then? Yeah, I'm just see. We have 33 people online yet. See if there's any other questions. Sometimes people are hesitant. Yeah, Shri Devi have... Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Gurudev. What a wonderful, what a absolutely graphic, absorbing, interesting, thought-provoking presentation, uh, Prem Kishori. I learned so much. I mean, you think first chapter, oh, okay. But so much I got to learn just by hearing you speak. It was wonderful to hear Gita Mahatmya. How wonderful to hear how important it is for us to, you know, read uh, Gita daily. You brought that home very nicely. And then the breakdown of all the different verses. I'm really so uh, enlivened <laughs> after hearing your uh, presentation. I'm very grateful to you for that. Thank you so much for doing this for us. Thank you. And I can just only look forward for more nectar. Um, I did have a question at this point, if I may humbly ask you. See, in the very end, when um, uh, Arjun says, better for me to die unarmed, unresisting on the battlefield. Uh, that's almost like a death wish. To that extent, he feels overwhelmed with compassion, sorrow, fearfulness of, you know, his situation, etc. So for a Kshatriya to say that, you know, better for me to die unarmed and unresisting, I, I would like to hear your comments on that, if I may humbly request for that. Well, the comment is in the, uh, is in the, in, in the chapter. You can... You, I think you know the verse, right, Frank Kishori? Uh, yes, Ramaj, I'm going to um, get up. It's actually towards the end, right? It's, well, it's in the second chapter, the answer. And Krishna. Makes oh, so, oh, Krishna, I thought, uh, okay, so I was thinking something different because I thought Prabhupada writes that um, weakness of the heart. Uh, Asochas, Anvasochas, Tam. That verse? Okay. Okay, I'll bring that verse. Then second chapter. Uh, oh, Krishna, my computer is now making me size <laughs> like nervous like me. So, asochas and vasochas tvam, your pragna bhasha se, how have these impurities come upon you? It is fun. It's, no, it's verse number no. 11. Shiva Gwanu Vacha 
The Lord at once took took the position of the teacher and chastised the student, calling him indirectly a fool. This one, Guruji. Yeah. Then he goes on. The Lord said, "You're talking like a learned man, but you do not know that one who is learned, one who knows what is body, what is soul, does not lament for any stage of the body, neither in the living nor in the dead condition." Hmm. But yeah, so he chastises him and then he corrects him. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> interesting. Thank you very much. Shridhi Mataji, does that answer your question? So Krishna is calling him a fool, <laughs> calling that. <laughs> but the thing is, and then where does the grief counseling go? You know, and Karuna care of his con. <laughs> so, <laughs> so where does the grief counseling go? Actually, he take, talks about that too. Like Matra Spasha Sukhandaya is like tolerate. Thank you, thank you, Gurmaj. That was really funny. <laughs> thank you. Good. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful presentation. I learned so much just hearing how it was presented. Yeah. Thank you. You encouraged. That's why a good move. Otherwise, any other question, reflection, realizations, correction? From anybody. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's class will be by Guru Maharaj, so please come with full energy. So here we have some comments on the chat. Um, and, okay. Ileana uh, Mataji, she is uh, saying that I want to express my compliments to Mataji Prem Kishori for the very clear lesson. And Balaji Prabhu is saying that a uh, lot of new points I could learn. It is really encouraging. Thank Please. you so much. Yeah, for doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I, I, have a, I have a question for you, uh, Mataji. Um, how would you introduce uh, the Bhagavad Gita to an uh, atheist person or fanatic of uh, um, your re religion? How will you introduce Bhagavad Gita yeah, to a person? A few words. Yeah, in, in a few words. To a person who is a fanatic? Is yeah, that or atheist or atheist Achha. how will you introduce you know i attended a seminar by uh, what's the uh, why am i forgetting the name the Prabhupada disciple who is a book distributor silicon valley president Gurmaj. Yeah, uh, Prabhu. so i attended a seminar by him as how to distribute bhagavad gita so I, I have to bring my Bhagavad Gita and show you. So he actually opens the book and says, Hey, buddy, how are you doing? Do you believe in karma? If somebody says no, yes, that doesn't matter. Then you show them a page, you know, where there's the cow, head of a cow is replaced with a cow, man of. Have you seen that photo, Ilina Mataji, in, the, in Bhagavad Gita, where the cow's head, a person is beheading a cow and then the head is replaced? So he says, says, don't worry, this is karma. You know, if you even if you believe, I don't believe. So there's a series of way. Okay, but how I personally, how I personally would do it is that it says that I are you looking for some higher happiness in your life? Is it okay if I show you something which will make you more happy? So I ask, how is it okay if I show you? We did a book distribution in Boston one time in a hemp fest. I didn't know what a hemp fest was. Do you know what's a hemp fest, Ilenia Mataji? Repeat the 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 last uh, because I speak a uh, little English. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So hemp fest. There was this uh, in Boston Common Park. We went and we put Prabhupada book stall in a hemp fest. So hemp fest is a marijuana festival. So mm -hmm. all the people were all hundred percent of the stalls were marijuana like you smoke you eat different hookahs different cigars 
Okay. And we went there from ISKCON Boston to distribute Shri Prabhupada's books. And it was the most amazing turnover, I tell you. It was the most amazing. We made so much money that day. People went to buy marijuana. They ended up buying Shri Prabhupada's books. So because we asked them, can we show you something which will make you more happy? So of course, it's mercy of Prabhupada, but Kumash, maybe you would help us more with that. Uh, yeah, I, I also attended one <laughs> in Boston, same thing. They have it every year because <laughs> it's right near our temple. It's only a couple blocks from the temple. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, yes, Swatiji. So that's, and then, yes. Uh, but we only give, we are only able to give it to someone if we are able to give it to ourselves. That's my personal. Yeah. If I'm not doing it for myself, I won't be able to do it for anyone else. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Krishna. Thank you very much. Sridevi Mataji, did you not lower the hand or is the second time raise? Anything yeah, is well. Second time raise okay. because I just wanted to add something to <clears throat> Elena's question. You know, when I would distribute books, you know, we all say, if sometimes, you know, they seem like people who may not be interested in a spiritual knowledge. I would say, are you interested in world history? You know, there's a really great war which took place and like that, you know. And then they would say, yeah, yeah, I want to know about world history. And I would say, look, this happened, you know, 5,000 years ago. And it's really great. It's very interesting. So many heroes and so many intrigues. And then they would accept it. You say spiritual and they get turned off. But if you present it some other way, then they are more accepting. Somehow or the other, let them touch the book, see the book, get the book, <laughs> things like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's just maybe helpful for Elena. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Shadi Mataji. Yeah. I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. So Mataji has a comment. Um, beautiful presentation with so many details and the reasons Arjuna does not fight and symptoms we display when we are materially attached. So many new things learned today. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. To lend. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much. Very yeah. edifying. Mm -hmm. you give it, I, my experience is it just reawakened my desire to investigate more and read more of Bhagavad Gita. I just felt really inspired now to take up Bhagavad Gita and read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gurmash. Uh, that was the goal. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, of course, that was a goal for me. I'm not saying like the over, it's just an overview. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Prem Pishori. Thank um, you. For time and uh, designing this uh, course and uh, starting it today. Um, definitely, we all learned. And uh, yes, as Guru Maharaj said, like we want to read it again and go deeper into Bhagavad Gita. Thank you so much. Thank you. The devotees, any more last minute questions or comments? Prem Kishori, you have been doing this course for thousands of people in South India for many years, right? No, no, my, my temple base is in South India, which is Mangalore, but we are doing it for the people all over the world. Wow. Because it's online, That's right? Cool. It's all over the world. It's for We started in COVID 2020, so four years now, and still running. So over 5 million people across the world have attended. And of course, last week I wanted to hear. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful. That's my temple in Thank Haribo. you. Haribo. All sure. glories to your service. I'll go to Gurmaj. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you, so Gurmaj. Thank you, Rabu. Anshakal Patro Bhescha, Kipasitu Bhescha, Patitanam Pavanapati, Patitanam Pavanapati, Patitanam Pavanapati, Patitanam Pavanapati,
Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.